good to see everybody here tonight. Bishop is wondering if everybody can move up a little bit, get a little bit closer to the to the altar. Amen. <laughs> we can never get too close to Him. Amen. I believe that. Praise God. We need to pray for quite a few of our members. Brother Mike is very sick. Um, he is not feeling well. And um, so continue to pray for him. Uh, pray for Angela. I believe she got out of the hospital today. And they didn't have, they couldn't get in time uh, for Warren to be in church tonight. So pray for him as well. Pray for Angela that she'll get settled in. All right. Yeah. Here we go. This is good. All right, but we I want to thank the Lord tonight. I wonder, could we just open up with a hand clap of praise to Him? Can we just love Him a, a little bit tonight? Because he is good. Yes. His 
mercy endures forever. And I am thankful to know his glorious name. We're going to go back a little bit on an oldie but a goodie. They say sometimes we don't sing enough old songs. You can be seated as the ushers come or usher comes and receives the offering. Amen. If you can, Hannah, give him your mic for this. How's everybody doing? Amen. Woo. All right. Uh, anybody watching online, we will be praying for you. You know, but uh, I didn't feel much like coming tonight, but uh, I was well enough to come, so I'm always happy when I, you know, you always feel better when you get here, so. And just, I just want to say, watching you two up there singing and worshiping, mm, always with a smile on your face. It's awesome. So y'all just go, go go to the Lord with me in prayer. Lord, we come before you, Lord, to thank you, God, for getting us all here safe, Lord. Thank you for the blessings you give us each and every day, Lord, that we don't even know. Lord, just uh, ask you to bless the remainder of this service, God. And uh, bless everyone watching online that are sick or just just couldn't make it tonight. Lord, let them be blessed by the word tonight, Lord God. And just uh, help them to recover quickly, Lord. Bless Sister Angela, Lord. Uh, let her recover. You know, Sister Martha, let her keep recovering. Lord, bless this offering, Lord Jesus. Lord, multiply, Lord Jesus. Lord, just uh, for, for your service, Lord Jesus. Lord, your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your name I pray. Amen.
you tonight, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Isn't there a sweet presence of God in this place tonight? It's beautiful. Just want to linger in it. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's great to be alive today, isn't it? Amen. Woo. Thank you for worshiping. It's been a great week. I think it's been a tiring week for some, but I tell you what, it's still great to be alive. And uh, it's great to have this privilege, isn't it? Isn't that right? And uh, I just want to commend you for, for being here. I know uh, I'll just use the word it's inconvenient sometimes to stop your week to come to church on midweek Bible study. But uh, I thank you for coming, and I tell folks all the time, and I don't think anybody necessarily needs to hear it, but I'll just say it anyway. The hardest part sometimes of church is just getting here. Once you get here, you always leave happy you came. You always leave happy you came, right? I'm going to put somebody on the spot real quick, and I, I'm, I'm, I ain't going to push hard, so if it don't happen, I'm, I'm not going to be upset. But uh, I was talking with Brother Charles before service. And uh, Brother Charles, I'm, 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 I'm going to throw it on you now. If you're not comfortable, that's okay. But I am going to ask, okay? And I think, I think you got it in you. Would you mind telling everybody your testimony that we talked about? Would you be okay with that for just a second? If, if, would you mind, and I'll at least give you the mic. I won't make you come up all the way up here, but if you mind, if you could come right here, if you don't mind, just where so everybody could see you, if you don't mind. You think so? There you go. There you go. Bro, let me tell you something. Let me just preface this before he starts. We started praying and God started moving. Go ahead, Brother Charles. Just take your time. Just say whatever you, however you want to word it's fine. But Brother Charles got a testimony. This testimony, me and Pastor Seth have been talking probably a few months now. I had a situation going on with, we at work. I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of client work back and forth. And Pastor Seth told me, he said, you don't pray about it, and it will come to pass. God is good. It was taking up a lot of extra time uh, of the Edies. Uh, sometimes he would have to be called out during service or before service even started or the weekend. And after you work 40 hours in a week, that gets a little tired after a while doing all that extra work. And not really, I don't believe uh, it was too, uh, should I say, I'm careful. It was too giving as far as financially. I don't think it was at all, was it? if that means anything and so we started praying and I just told brother Charles not that I've got any type of faith in fact whenever we do that spiritual assessment my faith is usually one of the lower ones if we're being if we're being clear and, and a little transparent hey I'm growing just like you I'm human just like you too But I told Brother Charles and Sister Vi, I said, we're going to start praying, and God's going to move. And I said, you ain't got to worry about it. You've been doing this for 20-plus years. You ought not have to do this no more. And I said, I believe God can move on some people, and you ain't got to do it no more. And I don't believe, Brother Charles, you've been called out in some time, over a month. Goes to show you, if you'll just pray specifically, that God will, he'll touch things that you wouldn't think that he would care about. Even if it just means, God, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this this week. I don't feel like messing with that. God cares about that. Yes, he does. He sure does. 
and I've made mention this uh, several times, but I heard a preacher preach one time the message, the audacity to ask. If we'll just have the audacity just to ask for it, because he said, ask and it shall be given, right? He didn't, he didn't preface that was, well, as long as it's real spiritual stuff, you know. Well, give me more time so I can pray, Lord, you know. Ah, he just said, ask and it shall be given. I think as long as it's uh, in the vein of the will of God and it's something that's not going to be to your detriment spiritually or physically, I think God don't have a problem with it. Right? Sometimes we just got to ask for it. Sometimes he's just waiting for us to ask. Right? So God is good, isn't he? Amen. I've been feeling some direction for some time now. And uh, uh, Sunday night the Lord started moving on me again and just kind of pushing me in a direction. And I, I want to I wanna just kind of jump into that tonight. I'm not going to be very long because uh, my wife's going to come up here in a moment. And she's going to give us some uh, instruction and some info about our vacation Bible school coming up. Okay, so I know we're going to need all hands on deck for that if we can. So, uh, but I want to talk to you, uh, just just a study tonight, and it's going to be something we're going to move into in the future weeks, okay? Who who doesn't have a notepad? Is there anybody in this place that doesn't have a notepad? Something you can write on? If you got your phone, that's fine, but I don't, I don't like writing on the phone sometimes. If y'all need a notepad, there's a box in the back. Brother Dex, you know where that box is. If anybody needs a notepad, just raise your hand. And I'm, I'm just going to keep going so you don't feel like you pointed out or nothing. But if you need a notepad, we've got some in the back. they got the ARC stamp on them. Use them for a prayer journal. Use them for messages, tidbits of knowledge, whatever you want. But we've got plenty of them back there. So they ought not anybody be in need of a notepad and don't have one. Okay, and we've got pens back there. Grab a couple of those pens back there too, brother, if you don't mind. And if somebody needs a pen, just grab them. Because uh, I've got some things that I'd like for you to write them down if you could. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of jump into it, and then we'll give some clarity in a minute. I don't believe I have a whole lot of scriptures up there sound, guys. So uh, I think i got just a few, so just kind of work with me. But in the scripture, there are three different minds of focus. Or uh, you could call it three different types of focus that can be found. And this being in order... The first one is what we call inner focus, uh, which is also known as self-awareness, all right? And I could go back over these in a second so you can write them down. Our first one is inner focus, and this is in order that they're in, okay? And I'll explain that in a minute. The second one is outer focus, which is known as God awareness, okay? And the third, and there's only three, is other focus, which is known as people awareness, or as we call it, others, okay? So in that order, we've got inner focus, which is self-awareness. We've got outer focus, which is God awareness. And we've got other focus, which is just people awareness outside of ourselves, okay? And awareness is just this, and I'll look this up so you can get this, and if you want to write this down later or look it up yourself, that's fine. But awareness is just this, the quality or state of being aware, having knowledge and understanding that something is happening or exists, okay? And so I, I've been praying about this, and I feel like the Lord has given me some insight as to where we are right now spiritually and what our next steps ought to be. And I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm saying that beside the fact of our vision. That's not changing. Our vision is reaching one this year. That's what our focus is, okay? But beside that, uh, I believe the Lord has kind of moved on me, giving me some, some insight of our next steps along with that. Um, if we neglect ourselves, okay, which is our first focus is inner focus. If we neglect ourselves, um, we won't be allowed by ourselves to have an outer focus, which is an awareness or a God focus of God, okay? And when we don't have that, if we don't have that God awareness and that God focus, we won't be effective when we attempt to have an outer focus or or, uh, or let's just say an other focus of, uh, or a people awareness, okay? In other words, if we don't take the time to have that inner focus, 
we're not going to be able to connect to our outer focus to God, and then we really won't be effective when we attempt to try to have an other focus to people. Right? So it's, it's an easy step-by-step -step process. If I neglect to focus inwardly, I won't be able to focus outwardly. And if I can't focus outwardly towards God, I'll never be able to adequately step into the ministry of reaching others. Doesn't mean I won't try. It just means that I won't adequately be able to step into the ministry of reaching out to other, to the people awareness, to, to the other focus that we have, okay? And I believe we're at a place I mean, we have some of the greatest teaching and preaching we could ever want, I believe. And I'm not building myself up. I'm talking about the leadership and the ministry of God that is in this body of believers. I believe we have some of the greatest anointed teaching and preaching that we could ever ask for. Uh, and, and as far as series and sermon topics and things that we have covered over the last year or two, we, we've covered our identity in God. We've covered tactics of Satan that he uses to try to pry in on us. We've covered praying daily. We've covered experiencing growth uh, while we go through different things in life. We, we've covered the, the practicality of Scripture, what God can do for me, that I can be better than my worst mistake. We've covered committing to God. We've covered taking the Word of God and putting it to use uh, in many other areas we, we've, we've covered in these areas. We have the presence of God moving in our services. Amen? I believe we've got the presence of God moving in every service. I believe anybody will be able to feel that. Uh, and, and God has given us great vision for what's to take place in this body and at, beyond this body. He's given us great vision. And having all of this is great. It's, it's necessary. It's, it's wonderful to have. But just having a knowledge alone of everything I've just listed is not enough. Just having an awareness of it is not enough. Because there's a difference between having an awareness of something and seeking after that awareness. See, if we don't take time to inwardly seek and, and, and focus then we won't be able to really grasp a hold to outwardly focusing. And if we can't do that, we won't adequately be able to focus on others. And so our focus is what? It's others this year. It's reaching people. It's reaching just, if I can reach just one. I don't know when God's coming back, I don't know. He might be coming tomorrow, but if I can just reach one person, Make some type of dip, plant a seed. It might not come to pass. When we plant a garden, it don't come up in two days. You don't have apples and oranges as soon as you plant. It might just be planting a seed. If I could just reach one person. But if we neglect to focus inwardly, we won't be able to grasp a hold to God outwardly. And if we don't do that, we're not going to be, be able to adequately reach out in the ministry of reaching others. In other words, we, we know what God can do for us, okay? We know the necessity of having the Holy Ghost. We know what the Spirit can do for us. We know all the benefits that, that, that come with the Spirit. We've, we've covered all of these areas. But how do we go from just having just an awareness of the Spirit of God to seeking and making contact with the Spirit of God. So one of the first things that must be done to get beyond just, just having an awareness is you've got to start asking yourself the questions that you only think about when you're in the moment of an altar call and the Spirit's moving. And you know that the Spirit's here and you know you need the Spirit and you know what the Spirit can do for you, and you know what the Spirit can do for your family, and you know the benefits of the Spirit, but how do you go from just having an awareness of the Spirit to being able to seek after it and then yield to it? Because if you don't yield to the moving of the Spirit, the Spirit ain't going to do nothing to you. 
And the spirit is not just a feeling. It's not just a, a, a tingling up the spine. It's a good, you know, hickamahoki, all that kind of stuff. It's not just that. It, it, it's wonderful. It, usually you can, your body will react when the spirit of God is in the room. But that doesn't necessarily do anything for you because your emotions and your body reacts when 38 specials playing. Or when you listen to your favorite rock band or you listen to your favorite gospel music, Brother Dexter, your dad playlist, your dad worship, and you get all them Holy Ghost goosebumps on you. But them Holy Ghost goosebumps really don't do anything in your life. They don't change you. They don't help you overcome things. They don't, they don't make you better. They, they don't, it may help your positivity and stuff like that, but that don't get you, that don't get you over the wall that we kind of hit up against here and there. We've got to get beyond that wall that we get up to. It's almost like that wall whenever we, whenever we have a great, wondrous service. We've got guests, man. We've got the greatest teaching in Sunday school. We've got a full house. Man, there's hungry hearts in the house, and we know what God can do, and we've been told God's going to do it today, and if you'll just believe it, man, God's moving in worship service, and Brother Freeze is over there just on that piano, and man, just goosebumps all over you, and then it's time for altar call, and we're just kind of, And we have awareness of what God can do. We have somewhat of an expectancy that God can do it because some of us have experienced different things in our lives that God can do and, and different things like that. But how do we go from just having an awareness to experiencing the awareness? To be able to have an, account, an encounter. It's almost what... what some, some of you guys may know when you're working on a car and you got your fuse block where your fuses are, if you pull that fuse out, there ain't no power going through. It's on, it's on one end, but you can't connect it over. And so there's power on this side, but how do we get the power from up there, down here, and into here? There's got to be somewhat of a fuse that connects these things together. It's got to be something that goes just beyond an awareness that I know God's got the power. Boy, man, ain't God powerful. He sure is. But how do you get the power working in your life? How do you get the Holy Ghost in your life? How do you even receive the Holy Ghost? What do you do? You ever asked yourself that question before? I think everybody would have the desire of being able to make contact with God and, and be able to feel the Spirit and have the Spirit kind of touch your body and, and you receive the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost get on you. But how do you, what, what do you do? How do you receive the Spirit? That's the questions I'm talking about asking. We'll think about those things when it's in the moment. But outside of that, we don't meet those questions until the next moment we're in that atmosphere. And then we're like, oh, I wonder what I ought to do. And then we just kind of, after a few services, we just kind of learn what everybody else does. And we just kind of, we, we fit the bill and we just kind of, love you, Lord. But how do we fuse it to where we can connect and get things connected together, right? So we've got to get beyond just that awareness, but we've got, to, we've got to start asking ourselves these questions so we can seek answers. Because if we don't ask the questions, we'll never seek an answer. And if you don't seek an answer, you never get connected. You never get connected. We live in a fast-paced world. I think everybody knows that. And if we don't stop and ask the questions and seek after it, we'll never find an answer. Remember what he said? Seek and you shall find. But if we don't ever seek, we're just going to be the same old guy, same old gal. I know God's got power. Seen him work in other people's lives. Boy, didn't Brother, didn't brother Charles get a, whoo, didn't he work in Brother Charles' life? Well, how do you get the God of Brother Charles to work in your life? How do you get him to start moving in your life? So, We gotta ask these questions. And so if we don't, it's almost like cobwebs take over. And because it's not necessarily in regular use, that inner focus, it gets very foggy and very unknown. And 
kind of scary. Can anybody attest to that? This area, these questions that are kind of unknown. And what do we do when we when we don't really know when the, when it's unknown and it's scary? Most of the time, we reject it. Anything that we don't understand, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, we reject it and we say, well, I know this has worked. But if you stop and ask yourself the question, what's worked? Is it safe? Does it make us feel safe because we're here and we do have this knowledge and maybe we have this security that if God comes back, at least maybe he'll bless my efforts? And I'm not here to scare nobody or preach hellfire and brimstone and, and get a hold of your emotions and preach in an altar. But, but according to the Scripture, just having that awareness is not enough. We've got to connect with God. We've got to stop talking about the Spirit and start receiving the Spirit. But how do we get from just talking about it to receiving it, to get the Spirit working in our lives? Because the Spirit's not just a feeling. It's not. And so if we don't ask these questions, it gets very foggy, very unknown. Uh, and so you start asking the questions like, how do I receive the Spirit of God? How do I entertain the presence of God? How do I yield to the moving of the Spirit? What does that mean? What, what does that even mean? How do we yield to the moving of God? Because it's almost like yielding on the road. If you don't yield, you have a crash. You, you, you just, it, it doesn't flow. There's not a flowing. And the Spirit is designed to flow if it's yielded. If we yield to the flowing and the moving of the Spirit, it starts to move. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to yield, what is yield? What does that mean? What do you mean? How do you yield to the Spirit of God? Anybody got an answer? I mean, it's just kind of foggy, kind of hazy. We know what the scripture says. You know, in Acts chapter 2, they were all in the upper room in one accord. They were praying pretty well for the same thing, seeking for the promise that you know, the Lord said, go and wait and tarry till you be endued with power from on high. And so they were kind of in one accord. And, and, and we know in several other scriptures, some were baptized first, some were baptized after. And so I, I think we all can conclude that you got to be baptized one way or the other, okay? And, and I believe they all, we all got to repent, have a change of, of course, change of path. Because if we don't, if we don't show God that we're we're invested into it to change, I don't believe He's going to stop what He's doing to to change our lives. And so we we, we know that you, we've got to have a change of heart, a change of course. A repentance has to take place in our lives. We know that much. We, that's got to take place. That's a part of that awareness. We've got that. But how do we get from just the awareness? To make it happen. How do we yield to the moving of the Spirit? It was a couple services ago, and it wasn't this past one that we had. It was one before. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about, where the Lord started moving, man, and we just yielded for just a moment, but we didn't know exactly. It's almost like, what do I do with my hands if you're a musician and you're not playing during a service? You just kind of You're just kind of like that. Yeah, we know to worship, but we just kind of feel naked. We don't know what to do because we're not up here. We're not, we're not kind of secure. We're just kind of open, and we're just, what do I do with my hands? And so there was a, a, a small factor of yielding, but it ne wasn't necessarily understood of how to do that. And But the Lord did move, and I, the, the presence of God was, man, it was heavy in this place. And if we can learn to yield to the moving of God, to where we allow the moving of God to work, if, if we focus inwardly, we ask these questions, we seek the answers, we find the answers, we learn how to yield, we learn how to, how to tarry a little bit. And I'll be the first to tell you, and, I, and I'll be transparent. I'll be as transparent. I'm not here to hide anything. I am working on my sermon time. Because you cannot receive the Holy Ghost most of the time after somebody preaches for an hour. You're tired and you're ready to go to the house. And so I, I do tell you, I'm working on that. I, I'm, I'm, it, it's difficult. If you've ever taught a lesson, you'll understand. It's difficult to get a, a point across in 30 minutes. But the old timers have always said that 30 minutes is long enough for a good sermon and too long for a bad one. Okay? And so I am trying to yield to that and give God time to move if we can learn to yield to these things. And so 
we've got to ask these questions, okay? I believe everybody's got a desire and awareness that wants to, to bask in the presence of God and, and become involved in the moving of the Lord. But if all we ever have is just an awareness that we never really focus ourselves on the questions we need to ask and how to seek God and how to yield to him, our focus is clouded outwardly. It's clouded outwardly. And when it's clouded outwardly and we really don't have that direction from God, when we attempt to try to step into the ministry of reaching out, it really doesn't. In fact, I've coined it lately. You've heard me reference it very uh, several times that whenever those things happen, we get frustrated. It produces frustration. And then we're sitting wondering why it's all, when I say it, all the teaching, all the preaching, all the you can do this, you can do that, you could be greater than your last mistake, all that stuff we've been working on the past several years. We're wondering why it's not working. Why it's not working. And so it's because there's not a flow. There's not a good flow of current, if you will, or electricity. There's got to be a fuse block, if you will, that connects everything together to allow a flow and a yielding of the Spirit of God. And so we, there's no lack in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, it's more powerful moving amongst humanity now than it was 2,000 years ago. Just because you don't see it with your eyes, don't be deceived. It's moving more now in the world than it ever has been in the history of mankind. It is. I've listened to several preachers lately that are of good rapport, uh, that are upstanding with God, that I've heard rapport, a report of, of different uh, crusades. You know a lot about them with, with Brother Billy Cole in different places, seeing 5, 10, 15, and 30,000 people receive the Spirit at one time or in one meeting. 30,000 people. So what do they do to get a flow? Because 30,000 people in one meeting, one meeting, not a week of revivals, one service, 30,000. They're able to connect. So it's not a lack of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is moving more than it ever has been, right? And the reciprocating of the gospel of Jesus Christ is just as powerful now as it's ever been to mankind. So if it's not a lack of God and it's not a lack of the gospel that we use to go reach others, then there's only other one other area of focus that may not be positioned correctly. I'm not saying we're not doing everything right or everything's wrong. No, 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 no. We just got to get some clarity. We've got we've to start stopping and really seeking God and just not getting beyond just being aware of God and aware of the knowledge of God that we have. I believe we've got great knowledge in the house. We know what God can do for us in our ministry and our identity and all those things that we've covered. We've got that, but we've got to go beyond that. And so if we don't seek after God, then we just kind of remain with just an awareness of God. And that's not enough. I wish it was, but it's not. And so I, I, want, I want there to be a flow. Listen to Acts chapter 17, and I'm fixing to get out of the way. Acts chapter 17 and verse 16. I want you to write this down. We're going to read from 16 to verse 28, okay? Acts 17 and verse 16, okay? We got it? All right, here we go. It says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers and Epicureans of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, he, he, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection, okay? So they were just whacked out by it, all right? Verse 19, and they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, I believe I said that right, saying, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. In other words, we want to know what you're talking about, 
you know, take a minute and explain this. Now watch this next verse in verse 21. I thought this was kind of just, it says, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. And we ought to take note of this. We ought to circle this in your Bible. Circle this little set of scriptures. Lest we become a people that constantly look for something new to inspire us. So many folks are, are waiting on the next best thing, the next heart-throbbing sermon, the next opportunity to cry at an altar and release the pressure of my conscience that's on me. We're waiting on that next moment that we can just break down and we don't necessarily come clean and get right with God, but we release all the pressure that's been on our conscience lately. And th that, that, that's a real thing. It's almost, you've heard Bishop talk about it when you're uh, in an airplane. Y'all probably know about this. When you're driving one of those jets, there's this thing that's called, what's it called, Bishop? spatial disorientation to where you don't know whether you're going up, you don't know whether you're going down, you don't know what's going on. And so you can't really tell. And so when we release that, anybody ever cried at an altar before? Maybe you just had a good, maybe it was at home. Maybe you just had a good cry. And nothing really changed, but you were able to release the pressure. And so it was a false sense of security thinking that you've gotten right with God, but you never did. All you did was just release the pressure. You didn't get right with God. You didn't repent. You just, uh, you just released all this pressure. You got up and you felt a whole lot better and you felt, oh, man, I'm refreshed in God. No, you just let the pressure off your conscience. All the guilt, all the pressure that's been on you, you really didn't change nothing. And so that's a false sense of security we can have. We, we're just seeking after that new experience. See, see, we've got everything in the palm of our hand to get all the power we need, all the miraculous needs met. All, anything you could want is in the Holy Ghost. And so we've got it. We don't need to look for something new. And that's what these people were, were saying here. It said that they spent their time doing nothing else but just either to tell or hear some new thing. That was their inspiration. That was what they got high off of, if you will, is just the next big inspirational thing that came along. Listen to what I heard. Listen to what this, and, and they never really got anywhere. Just floating on, kind of like a gypsy for Jesus, just kind of floating on a high octane. Just kind of kept going off, and when it wore off, they looked for something else. Look at what, uh, let's see here. I can't remember where this scripture is at. Forgive me. The Bible says that the eyes of the fool are in the ends of the earth. Always seeking after something else. You have to write that down and look it up. I apologize. I didn't have that written down. But verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. In other words, they had an awareness that there was some higher power. They had the awareness. They just didn't know exactly how to seek after him. Or they didn't take the steps needed to seek after him the right way. Because at that time, man, the, the ministry of Jesus Christ was still rampant in that area. And it was fresh. So I don't think necessarily it was the fact that they just didn't know. Where are we at? Verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is, a Lord, he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and hath made of, a, of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Here we go. Verse 27. You got it? You ready? Read it with me. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him. Stop right there. Not just seek him, but feel after him. Feel after him. 
not just seeking after God. God, I want you and I need you, and, but feeling after him, feeling in your spirit, putting your feelers out there, doing more than just talking about it, getting serious, getting a hold of the spirit of God because I, I tell you, what, I need the spirit of God in my life. We all know what the Spirit of God can do for us. We know all about that. We've got the awareness of that. But making that contact to where it can come in my life and take anything out, burn it out that I don't need, anything that's not like him, all the stuff we're struggling to try to get rid of our lives already. We're struggling to do it, trying to get positive, trying not to talk nasty, trying not to think dirty, trying not to say things to different people, trying to live right, trying to do what we can, but we're just kind of struggling after it. But if we get the Holy Ghost, it's all we'd ever need. It'll purge those things out of us. It'll help you think right. It'll get your mind on your shoulders good. It'll help you make good decisions. Even when you get to Ohio, it'll lead you when you may need to go down a different path this day, drive a different way to work. I'm hurrying. But that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us it says for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for we all are also his offspring remember jeremiah 29 and i'm closing right now verse 12 and 13 <clears throat> we've read it before but when you get into, when you try to go beyond and you get you the cobwebs out of your brain and you try to think about these things and really get your brain cranking and smoke starts coming out you know what i'm saying real thinking or you're trying hard to say, you know, where I, how am I supposed to do this? And what You really start asking these questions. But when you read this scripture now, it has a whole new meaning. Watch what he says, Jeremiah 29 and verse 12. Then shall you call upon me, that's seeking, okay, and you shall go and pray unto me, that's feeling after him, and I will. Remember I told you not long ago that the word of the Lord came to me and my wife, it was spoken under, over us that we've got an I will from the Lord. And then I came back from that conference and I, I stood up as the authority that God has given me and I've placed it on this congregation. You've got an I will from the Lord and it's even in his word that if we'll not only seek after him but feel after him, get your, get your hands to work, get your, get your mind working, Stop just going to work and coming home and going to church and going to work and coming home and going to church and the same old thing. It's time to put that fuse in there. Watch this. He says, and I will hearken to you, verse 13. Here we go, last one, and I want my wife to get ready to come up here. You can just bring him. I'll get him. Verse 13, and I want you to read it with me. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Not just seeking, but you're feeling after him. And you make that connection where the spirit can move and you learn to yield to the moving of God. Oh, I'm, oh, she's coming and then she's going to give us some instruction. I'm not trying to keep you long. But, but I want you to, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to do a panel discussion. Okay, in a couple weeks, uh, we're trying to get a date. We, we, we may have to schedule this for after vacation Bible school. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a panel discussion, and, and, and I'll make a decision whether we'll, uh, we may not live stream it so it can be a little bit more personal. And so we're going to talk and ask the questions that we usually never ask about how to receive the Holy Ghost and how to yield to it. Because we've got all the knowledge about the Holy Ghost, we know what it can do and all those great, fine, dandy things. But how, what do we do when it's altar time? And we say, okay, let's everybody come up here. Let's push the chairs back. Remember now? And we say, let's just worship the Lord. Let the Spirit move. And we get up here and some of us raise our hands, some of us don't. But those, we just kind of. What do we do? I'm talking about practical stuff. What do we do to receive the Spirit? And so that's what we're going to discuss. And in the upcoming weeks, I want you to take time, okay, and think about these questions. I want you to ask yourself, I, I, you know, you may want to ask the question, how do I need to stand? Do I need to stand? In fact, the Bible says that, that where they were sitting, the Spirit fell on them. 
And it also says, I believe it was Acts 19, well, it's Acts chapter 2 as well, all throughout the book of Acts, that they spoke in another language. So if you're not speaking, if you're just doing that mind thing where you talk to the Lord, it says they spoke in another language. So if you're not actively having words come out of your mouth, that's also a form of yielding, yielding our mouth. If it's just Holy Ghost can't come through, that's not yielding. Holy Ghost can't move on somebody with their mouth closed. Can't happen. And that's practical stuff. Okay, so I want you to ask these questions. What do I say? How long do I seek for? Do I need to stand? Do I need to put my hands up? Do I need to close my eyes? Do I need to lift my head back? Do I need to get shoved into the floor? Let me give you a quick answer. No. But I want you to write these questions down, and the time will come. We'll schedule it, and we're going to have this panel, and we're just going to ask practical questions, and we're going to learn how to receive the Holy Ghost because if we can get the Holy Ghost moving in here and not just in the atmosphere, things will begin to change that you've been fighting for for so long. So I want you to look forward to that. I am so excited about that. So help me and be praying about it. And in the meantime, start feeling after the Lord. Start feeling after him and see if he don't start moving on you, okay? God bless you. My wife's going to come. I'm sorry. I try not to be too long. I love everybody.